May have proved something on Cash. Okay, they can win a map against the team who battered them on day one, but then they suffered that same fate on Mirage. Sure. We go to the map that they played on day one. It's not looking good, is it? It's a bit of a problematic affair, especially from what I saw on Mirage as well. A very uh, flat SK gaming throughout that entire, both halves, I have to say, never really impressed me at all. They got the pistol in the first half there, but it's completely wrecked in the, the actual gun rounds. We move over, and then Config, he just looks so strong there throughout that entire campaign, especially on the CT side, right? I've never seen anyone control middle like that by themselves, without backup from the teammate, with an M4. With an orb, sure, that, that can happen, but he's pushing out window. He's boosting himself up towards short. He's getting connected, finding two kills pretty much every single round. That was a sick performance from him. If he can continue that towards overpass, which he was great on in his first showing as well when we fought for this matchup. Yeah. Let's see if he can actually continue it, but... Uh, SK, a lot of work to do here. Like you said, we've seen him play this map already, and it was more the same. They actually looked like they were getting completely shut down with the adjustments Dignitas were making almost every single round. MSL was reading them like a book. Yeah, interestingly enough, there was a lot of pressure applied onto that B site, like we mentioned, but there was also a lack of aggression, I guess you could say, on the CT side to try and establish a presence toward lower stairwell, to try and pin through the main and, and limit the options that Dignitas were getting, and it seemed like hesitation. Fox, again, the score at the start, we, we made mention of it just because it's a storyline that we want to keep track of. Everyone wants to see how he's going to do with SK. All the Brazilian fans obviously are hoping he does well. I don't so much point him out necessarily for not getting kills in the starting rounds because he was playing a lot of rotation games. So he was showing up in disadvantaged situations where yeah. they were retaking sites anyway. But there was a few moments when he definitely could have had an impact and, and failed to find it. So maybe he's a little more comfortable. Maybe it was jitters that, in the opening game with that, him. Yeah, was the, that's the thing. It's the opening game, right? He's just like, you know, there's a lot of people are watching him. So obviously there's going to be some hit or miss moments there. He was 0 for 10 on the CT side of overpass. The problem I had with it wasn't so much like the aim or anything like that. It was just the synergy on the B bomb site. Yeah, who was playing it with him? I can't actually remember. But regardless, it was. Um, the moments where like the teams were coming in through Monster Tunnel and Short, they were actually two separate, like one so or three situations, yeah, right? Yeah, usually Taco's over there with them. I think it was yeah. Cold and Fallen that were playing together on A. In most cases, they did switch it up based on weaponry that they had. Because I know Fox was caught in behind track a few rounds It just well. seemed like Fox was getting himself in positions to get one frag and he was getting no backup. They weren't really kind of contributing together. Like normally you want to be taking the aggro away, take a few shots, hide, a teammate comes and takes the aggro from you and then you're kind of throwing flashbangs and then kind of making it really difficult for the teams to pin you down one by one. And it actually looked really, really difficult for them to actually get that synergy flowing. And that's something you need on that B bomb site. It's a really important part of the map, obviously at the bomb site, but still it's where the teams will focus most of their set pieces when they're going to do them straight away. If they're on lesser money as well, that's what they'll be heading towards. But it looks like we are actually ready to start this one. I think we had to swap a PC out um, on yes. the Dignitas side, but this is a knife round to kick things off. It's not a massive deal on overpass, but still, it's the CT side of map technically. Well, do you want to be starting on the CT side? I would say it's a massive side. In this matchup, I would say yes. Exactly. I'd say more for SK. They want to get what they want for to start this off and get momentum going, no doubt. So we'll see how it works out. I'm still not going to do it. Everyone wants me. I can hear people shouting. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm not going to do it. I'm saving it. I told you I'm getting old. My mind doesn't work he'll that say, way. He'll anymore. do one tomorrow. <sighs> Don't do that to me, Henry. It's been a while. It has. It's all right. Someday. You got to do it at the most opportune moment. Fox, run. He's got one swipe on each if you can find this right. Mm, never mind. So, like you said, SK probably one of the most comfortable start they could possibly get. Not going to get that CT half. We'll be Dignitas at picking it up. And if you are just joining us and missed the pregame, yes, they have played each other on this map as the opening game for both, both of these teams. Dignitas beat them on over past 16-7. Not really much to report in terms of good points for SK. They looked really, really weak, and especially in their CD half as well. And from what I saw in their T half on Mirage, you can tell they've only had three days practice this lineup. It's not the SK we're used to seeing here. And if you're wondering why FNX is not here, it's not a spelling mistake. It's his Fox, the Portuguese player, filling in for them. FNX has been removed from the lineup, and this is the lineup going to the major as well. So obviously, it's got time to adjust for things at the end of January, but so far, this team is looking a little bit desperate. Oh, that's lovely to start it off. Good plot from MSL, but config down to fur, and this is going to open up some opportunity on the B site. They're already wrapped in behind. It's a full flank play from Dignitas on a retake. Well, I'm not yet planted. A man down and desperate with the HP has fallen on nine. Let's try and get nice. that plant, but they're going to go back the other way. You're going to rotate in behind us. We'll go ahead and go all the way back through your spawn to A. So it's actually all around the map. Everyone has been already. Yeah, Ravino's ready, though. He's actually read this very nicely. It could be the default plant. I can't quite make it out. He's actually behind the bomb test. So that's a good decision from Eskin. They're not sure what's on the other side. So the bomb gets planted. Still the man mm. advantage heavily now for Dignitas. Gage and B lands another headshot. And the two remaining SK players with little to no HP taken down there pretty easily. And quite a simple round for Dignitas. It was a nice idea from Eskin. They knew the bomb site was going to be retrieved by Dignitas 
after they lose this first couple of players there. But MSL, what a shot that was. I'm sure we're going to see a replay of that. What a fantastic way to kick things off. He pushes off short and he keeps getting better and better. He's one of the players that, not necessarily the star, he's in-game leader, the mastermind, but he still seems to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. A lot of top players these days. Great opening shot from him. Funnels him towards the A side. The bomb goes down short, but still looking comfortable overall for Dick. So, bomb planted. We did see SK actually forced by this round, I think, on cash it was. They came in with that full execute, remember. Not going to be doing the same thing here. They didn't really get the kills to justify it. I think just one PD50 purchase, and we'll be getting the AKs out in the third round. We'll have a look at the Bible Dignitas. Like I said, this is my, normally my favorite Antigo approach. Three rifles, two SMGs, a UMP heavily in the meta right now. We'll be going with those M4s. A little bit of uh, info started to scatter there towards middle. Taka does headshot Rubino to start the round. Trying to see if there's anything more for him to find. Not going to be the case as he decides to fall back. Fox and Fallen will work together to try and get the bathrooms. To the right. They've also got Fur and Colts coming up from behind now inside of the stairwell just to get to the top. But the M4 pros in ready. Poised and ready, I should say. Excuse me, from Balda. Position that leaves him slightly open though for exactly that. If he goes to one side, they can easily pop out and catch him off. That's what Fur does. He's going to backpedal from long, therefore, and try and cover them when they cross into the site. He's in good position. He's in good time, but smartly they're not going to overcommit SK. They'll get the gun instead and try and use it elsewhere. Problem is going elsewhere means Config's already taken back that mid connector and they won't be able to rotate quite so easily. So they are going to limit it in. Oh, he tries to get the headshot on the cage and can't quite land it. Still trying to peek out this game where he can't. Good dink. Taking down the end until the M4 shows up and Fergus and Cage and be down. It's back to a two versus two. Bomb's still in the hands of Fall, and he's back toward the bathrooms, but Config's going to go all the way around that. This is actually quite clever from him. Yeah, he had the opportunity to go for a connection and challenge him in the back, but he did the long rotation here. Bomb not planted, but Fur has got an M4 in hand. Config finds him in the back, taps him down. That's the M4 dropped as well. That pretty much secures the round. Fur, he goes down now, leaving Fallen. Back towards the B side. Going to get a bomb plan out of this. It's still a sliver of hope he can actually win the round, considering all the time he'll have to play with it. Bomb planted. Rubino's starting to realize this could be the case. And like I said, a real small chance that uh, F4 can do anything with this. Let's see what he's got up his sleeve. Tries, tries desperately to find headshots. Quick peeks back away. All right, spots them both coming out at least, but smoke off in front. Yeah, good luck now. <laughs> and Diffuse already in, not being held. Tap, they want to bait this pistol back in. Fallen's going to read that guess on it. He's right in doing so, but now they got config on it. He's got a kit. I'm sorry, Fallen. This one is over. And so too is your life. He'll go down. But the good news is here, Matt. They were going to buy in this round regardless. They get another bomb down. They've done damage to the CT economy. So if they do it in this round, it's almost a guaranteed eco for Dignitas here. So that's actually decent overall. Yes, they didn't win the round. There was a chance to do it. But still, look at the buy now. SK, five AKs, all the nades they need for a full execution here. And Dignitas fully invested into this one. Only Valder with money left over. He's got $1,500 left in the bank. So a great chance to get into this round, or get into this game right now here with this round. They're going towards 1B. Probably a full execution. He could be dropping. It's going to be nice and fast. We'll see what happens. Going towards short, trying to find any sort of aggression here. Rubino with decent nade. Look at the damage he's inflicted. That's almost perfect. Takes third down to 60. Box to 54. And tags up Cold Zero a bit as well. He's looking for an opportunity to try and play from behind. He's also trying to beat for a good Molotov placed in his time. Well, the problem is, I was going to say, no one from Monster was in position because they time it with those going in at sandbags. They look to go to the left, and Rubino's got a smoke out to cover a great shot from Fallen. Best chance to shut them down was exactly that bomb plant in SK with the good execution out of the B side. It's going to force the retreat already if they've been tossed. They're bailing along. Yeah. And it's going to be their first round picked up early as well. So keeping these guns up because they haven't established a full three round economy is quite important. Yep, absolutely. Like I said, they're going to be struggling for money if they did lose this round. So saving the two M4s, probably force up around and see what they can do here. But there it is. The B execution comes in from SK. They take a lot of damage from that early grenade from Rubino, but it doesn't seem to affect them too much. Only lose one player, and the B execute works out quite nicely. The Molotov towards the barrels, smokes on the bomb side as well, flashing out those CTs and landing the shots that really count. It's fallen in Cold Zera, joined in by Taco as well. And now just MSL and Cajun B trying to save their weapons towards Long A and the playground area as well. They will save them. SK not hunting down too much, to be fair. Probably not worth it. You want them to force run. You want them to really break their money. They're probably going to try and do what they can with the remaining money and just try and buy up around these M4s. And almost you, you kind of welcome that as a T-side. You want them to completely destroy their economy. And we'll see whether that will come in. Could go with a conservative approach, of course. It could just keep the two M4s and not buy anything. Looks like it will just be that. A lot of teams would be tempted at this point to try and see what they can do with these two M4s. We did say, though, in the previous map, Dignitas are actually a team that 
Look at the bigger picture overall. They don't give too much away. They want to keep the money strong throughout the whole campaign. That's how with Flames just forward of his position at the bottom of the stairwell is going to try and do the exact same back so they can't make it to the door holding him off. And then it's just a battle of back and forth. Throw an aid, throw a smoke. Four nades deployed, no one spotted, but position advantage to MSL. He's going to back away and rotate the long direction back over toward A. Should he like to do so? He still has good position to watch through short pipe over toward the mouth of Monster, but Cajun's pushed up in behind the tree. This gives them information on the A side, and he's got a support system in place from Volda as well. Try and head that direction, SK. Molotov's back out in front of the bathrooms. I know with the nades that were thrown at the bottom of the stairs, there was someone inside that connector position, but Fox has already pushed back MSL, so they don't need to good cover. Instead, they want to just get him and get the kills, but he gets one and gets away. He's got a lineup as well with this M4. He's going to find two. That's massive for him. Really, really nice play from MSL there. Very calm under the pressure. That's the shot required. Now, he's fallen back as well, keeping the majority of his health up. So this is really perfect stuff from him. 35 seconds remaining. CTs don't have to heavily commit at this point. It's still quite deep down towards long, but that's fine. Cajun B, I was going to say, Paul has not got a check pack. He does half-heartedly and does come out on top somehow. Bow down needs to be careful, does manage to get the shot with the Desert Eagle as well. So, takes down Paul. Upgrades with AK-47. Two players remaining for the SK and they make their way towards the A side. Rubino has spotted the road. So it goes in. Tries to peek out toward long. No one in that direction. Just oh. have to confirm it. In doing so, he leaves his back exposed to the stairs in a peculiar fashion. Bolt's gonna try and slip through smoke, but he's got a flank coming in, and Volta finds the shot before he can respond. Four stay alive, and three rounds now for Dignitas. That was two M4s and USPs with one Deagle, so it's all down to MSL. Someone needs to step up here and find some frags. He goes aggressive on short. Esco don't see it coming, and Fox goes out first and fur follows him shortly after MSL, providing the frags to actually win round number four there. Good work from Long as well. I like that setup there. I thought Cajun B was going to capitalize, but Valde does just, does just enough of that Desert Eagle to take that Fallen and the round out of the grass with SK Gaming. We go into round number five. Still money available for the Brazilians. Four AKs and a Tech 9 in the hands of Fur. And aggressive, of course. It's Valde going towards middle, trying to see what he can do. But he's caught much. There's two players towards the playground, and he retreats back towards the connector. Cole's going to flash over so they can peek onto Long. Two players jump around. First to limit it on this Tech-9, but they've got a man up, so the gun's now level. Good timing, miss shot, Fox prevails. They've been leaving him in that position to try and cover off. Great shot, Fallen on the Cajun, but cover off those rotations and keep options open. So that seems to be his task this time, whereas opposed to Cash, they were letting him go first. And he'll set the smoke toward the back stairwell, Fallen. Well, it's off for the truck. And into the same go, seeing all this utility deployed, though. MSL tries to strike first, and then Put out what he can to delay them so that their utility insufficient and insignificant due to the timing of it. MSL's going to try and push back, realizes they've gone as well. So this should leave a rotation back over toward B of the two players that remain, whatever they can. A config, if I'm not mistaken, is inside the window. Yeah, just jumped back down inside of the site. So he'll be the only one here. Against five players walking in. Three of them low enough on HP, but he can't spray down and find fur. The first one in this round's over. Absolutely. Quite a clean sweep here for SK. After such a successful round with just two M4s. Dignitas can't hold on, and this could be quite a harsh reset for them. They still have 4,700 on MSL and 4K on Valda, but the other guys, if they save this AK, potentially could buy up around it, but still quite a significant loss in terms of the economy overall. Was that you? Did you uh, just flush toilet the toilet? Flushes? I haven't actually heard that in a while. I forgot it even does that. Yeah, It's pretty funny. Yeah, only when MSL's in there, apparently. Well then, it's going to be round number five going in favor of SK, looking very confident indeed. Four players picking up a frag there. Zero. Oh, another one. That was me that time. Sorry. It's okay. Double flush, we just do, in case, we, right? We go to the, yeah, we go to the, the bathroom The courtesy flush. That's right. <laughs> so bomb explodes. SK will go up to two rounds as a result. Nice work. They keep the AK up on MSL, though. He's got 61. Drop that over. 54.50 for Valda. They could buy into this with 43 in config as well. So right now they've got a pause called. Whether or not that's tactical this early, I'm not 100% yeah, sure it yet. Is. It is okay, so it's called out. So this is them taking advantage of the new timeout rule. Yeah, so they've got an AK saved. MSL is six thousand dollars in total. They're going to be forcing around this one. So the AK that saved is tremendous for them. He's dropped an AWP over. They're going to have a UMP and M4. The saved AK. I think Convict has an M4 waiting to buy as well. He hasn't done that just yet, but still, the M4 comes in. And Dignitas now looking to maintain their lead. It's three-two. SK could tie things up if they win this round. 
quite back and forth so far. No one really running away with it at all. There's Conflix M4 purchased. As we do get into this one now. The final map here and his best of three. Loser goes home. And that proceeds to the semi-finals tomorrow. Let's just see if this AWP can reap the rewards. They buy into it, leave themselves as a rifle light for Rubino. And the good news is SK haven't got normal themselves. Occasion can cause a lot of damage. He's going very aggressive yeah. towards long as well. Okay, knife out the whole way. Looking towards Playground. I like the audacity of it. Let's see where we can find this first shot. Nothing found so far, but Fur is waiting very deep in towards the playground there and it's going to be MSL taken down but KGB does find a shot and return towards the playground Convict chimes in as well it's a man advantage gifted towards Dignitas for now very fortunate that KGB has got that kill in response I mean obviously yes Convict steps up and finds one as well but if MSL pushes while KGB is doing the same on the offsite they don't get a response from it it leaves a possibility for a fast play on to B right now though SK down a man has fallen slowing the pace with bomb over toward Monster and Cold thinks about looking back over to see if KGB is still sticking around but at this point Minute four, yeah, okay, no thing, no thing's said to be equal at this point, but looking to be B. Indeed. Well, let's do a contact play for now. Why not make it a surprise play? Let's nail this first headshot. Could actually happen as well. I like this setup those CTs have got. Config, this is the first shot, but Vox rips his head off. Nice work from him. Now we're going to back down the ramp as well. Just waiting to bait them in with this SMG. Smokes in front, flames as well. Flash already there, knows they're going for the plant. Likes not to go for the jump up on top of it right away. He'll let the rotations come in first. So holding on to the fifth position in this case. I think Fallen may have just spawned him down through the gap. They're going to start looking. Flash goes out. Fallen wants to cross away before the smoke dissipates. He manages to get to the sandbags. But that's where Vold is waiting for him. Coming in from the connector. And interestingly, Cold's not going to play an angle to cover him off immediately. That leaves Fallen with very little room to wiggle. Instead, he wants to bait him in all the way because it's not likely he's going to check that corner. He fires it oddly enough. And Cold considers, drops down, takes him out. Up the Dignitas to win this from the front. Quick tap on the bomb to bait it out. But like you say, no kids. They'll boost up. Paul and jumps himself in. I'm not sure why. Because, or rather, excuse me, Cold's here. Because now it is just Paul but he lines them up perfectly and hits the headshots on both. That got a little risky. Uh -huh. Yeah, they, they wouldn't have full defused that anyway. I think at that point the bomb was going to explode. Like it exploded three seconds after and they only just started with defuse with no kids. So it looked quite pretty from Paul, but he'd already done the hard work at that point. This was the really impressive shot. It's a four on three. Let's see how Fox opened it up. That's really precise. Great work from him to open up the B-bomb site and Fallen, like we said, very pretty to finish things off. They line up for him and he gets the double spray down. That's broken the economy of Dignitas now. 3-3. After finding that initial pick as well as Cajun B aggressive towards long. Got the man advantage of MSL pushing off short. They put him in a bit of a tricky situation there. Pretty much what he's doing here. Rubino, the only player with an upgraded pistol, is only a P250 as well. He goes down to 36 HP. The rest of his teammates on USBs. A chance now. In terms of the money, will this be a double eco? Mm -hmm. Don't think it will. We're going to have 24 in the next round. 2k already, so he's just about to squeeze out of buy. Nice tapping from Fur. Config over commits to the stepping position and gets caught off by it. In fact, got hit twice because it wasn't a headshot that came through from that AK-47. Aggressive stance in toward the water and construction areas. MSL's waiting to watch Monster in case they slip in the back door and then they'll try and surround them and hold them and contain them inside of the site, but Fox and Fallen won't necessarily allow that to happen easily with their positions rotating back over into their teammates and at the top of the stairs at mid. Taco first. I would love a taco right now. Yeah. I can tell. It's up toward the top of the ramp very slowly, but watch this position. Marcel doesn't quite get the headshot lineup. Fox will find Rubino, and they know now everyone else is. Running to save. Fallen waits. Down goes one. Down goes... One and a half, there's two. Fallen looking very impressive with the AK at the moment. They managed to have another clean sweep here. Five players staying alive for SK. 4-3. Let us remind you, and we banged on about it in the pregame. This matchup has already happened, this map. It was 16-7 in favor of Dignitas. Especially their CDs are very strong indeed. We'll see what happens. And SK now have got the lead. Money stone or grave of Dignitas, like I said. $2,400 coming into this round, and they already had about 2K before. So all they can really get is M4s, no head armor, a small amount of grenades, and one kit. Rough time for them. They lose this round. Certainly going to be eco. And it should be just another B execution coming. And all five players for SK towards B, keeping things simple at this point. They know the synergy isn't quite there for those full defaults. So let's just keep going and heading towards the B side. Molotov into those key positions, and we'll see whether it keeps working out for them. I'm actually curious to think that, I mean, CT side, like you say, it seems easier because it's defensive. You don't have to go aggressive. It doesn't rely on timings, but. It's harder to slot somebody because you have rotations and communications. It's actually a tougher side to play as a team. And 
Oh, he was starting T side, letting Fox get up to speed. It's actually a benefit to them as we saw them struggle so hard early on in the last few maps. That's the case, but this time it's going to be Dick the Toss. Shutting down both bird Fox as they wrap around inside the site. Good wall of smoke still up. Those shut out the bomb plant. Cole tries to take advantage of the facts. The bomb goes down. He might catch them off. That doesn't work, and all of them perished and gone is going to leave Dick and Toss to tie things back up on four. And with three rounds built up, they still have a buy in hand, but a big win for Dignitas because that's going to mean guns for both sides and break potential still works for the favor of SK. It's very important as well to kept four players alive as well. Even if they lost two more, that means players on SMGs going forward as well. It's actually a crucial round for them to pick up and keeping the healthy numbers as well is great. Fallen finally brings out the AWP on the T side. This is where things get interesting. Dignitas not in the position to do the same themselves yet, but round number nine, back and forth so far. SK Gaming tying things up, but let's see whether Dignitas can be applying the aggression. Seems to be wanting to push short and trying to find information. So Cage is pushing long as well. This time we have got three players towards middle. Lauda hasn't been shy to face towards mid, but this time he's got the AK-47. Let's see whether he can find another headshot here. That's going to be a fast play towards mid from the Resilience himself. So Fox gets another, but Fox is in the corner right behind him. He's able to clip the tail and fur. Compensate for the fact that he pushes through the smoke a little bit aggressively, given that he was in a tight corner and had nowhere really to run. So why not strike while well, the iron's hot? Fallen still with the AWP gives the man advantage to SK, and he's watching down toward a long position, waiting back in case they push through. And he still has bomb, keep in mind as well. So one pick would be enough for them to charge into his sight. Config knows that, so he's going to try and get aggressive and catch them off by pushing all the way through their own spawn. And Rubino knows they're somewhere in that position because B was cleared off. The only way they could go is back down through these stairways to get over there. So Config, the further up he goes, the more passive-aggressive Rubino stays inside the bathroom, the more he can confirm you're getting closer. And in fact, that kill's going to slow them even more. This could work out for Dignitas Config. Oh, he's gone back around, though. He would have been at Fountain right around now, which would have caught them, but he... With that kill, I perhaps thought that that'll funnel them back over to B. Best watch it instead, and Rubino thinks the same because he's going well passive on A. 2-1-2, two 30 seconds. Bomb encroaching on towards his A site now, and we have got a player towards CD spawn. That will be Rubino lying in wait by the CD steps. Molotov goes towards the bank. He's going to know it's an A side of attack now, but look at this. Conflict by the position to deny the plan, but they're aware of it. Now it's two versus one in the hands of Rubino. Shot through the smoke. Fallen not found. Bomb plant going to come in. He's got lots of time. Taco. There to cover him off as well. Quick need into a dress of the smoke. Perhaps no, it was a flash, so it didn't actually catch him out. I wasn't sure what he was going for with that anticipation, but Rubino's gonna tap it, try and bait it. Knows Taco's playing the long position. Goes for the solo beat. Does bait out the shots. Knows now he's not defusing. They don't have to panic, don't have to overcommit. Needs to be careful not to get caught on his own here, because he could fall in the position where it's two one-on-ones, but they go. Falling gets closer just for good measure, and they'll get the round. So it's going to be five now for SK. They're starting to build up, and I would say, a more inspiring total than what they had in the first time these two teams met. Yeah, lots of resets back and forth here, but SK certainly have got the money control for now. It's 5-4 in their favor. Rubino can't come up trumps there in two versus one after trying his absolute best. Config had the best chance of actually getting him into that round. He comes in the back. The SK so aware, and he stopped the plant and uh, managed to take him down. Here we go, the round number 10. A little bit of a partial by coming in for Dignitas. They left them only about the 2K mark. They're actually maybe able to buy the next round. They're going to get it 1900 on top of the 2K they've got right now. So they get some pistols and body armor, and they'll be stacking towards the connector receives where SK waiting for them. The Lions then is going to have few occupants now as the Danes make their way in towards the connector area. Fox just waiting for them now. Lions then occupied by a Fox. The Lions yes. strike first. Baldi gets two out of this. An assist plus one in cold. He sprays down Baldi, but he's lost in the smoke and he's so, so low. One more bullet, he's gone. Rubino's not going to fire it. And Cold knows that's the problem with it. Cold knows if he shoots back in that low, he's dead. One tracer gives him up. Rubino in the sights is going to take ball, and it's all going to be Dignitas rotating it around. Wow. Again, they win around when they don't have the guns to work with. That's insane. Three pistols in the connector actually coming out on top. And SK were ready for it as well. They were kind of waiting and crouching, crouching around the corner and actually making sure they pre fire it. Lose the first kill, and it all goes horribly wrong. And you're absolutely right. Cold Zero couldn't do anything about it. He has the option to spray through the smoke, and you can see his tracers going through that smoke. He could be taken down. One bullet would have been it. And now a four versus one, nothing he can do here. Literally impossible to win this round. That's how to save up in that corner. Yep, there he goes. Well, there it is, Matt. This has been a strange one so far. No one really running away with the game, and it seemed like that was a chance for SK to take a pretty convincing lead at that point. Two rounds in the back, but Dignitas has come back with the PG-50s and 5.7s, managed to make it work. Okay, then. Why not?
Rubino who finds two kills there with the AK yeah. and Cajun and Varda with the pistols there in the start. What a nice little adjustment from them. Frustrating round to lose. Yeah, Valda again is putting up good numbers. There's one kill behind Rubino. Everyone fairly closely grouped on both sides. As to is the score. It's going to go to 5-5. Five, five. Nothing in it, but I'm still concerned. I want to see if SK can accumulate a bigger lead in this. They got to go to 9-6. Their CT side was very, very poor. I have to make mention of it. And this time, it's going to be their economy that goes quite low in this. Cold Zero does have the AK carried over. He can drop that across. They'll be able to buy up two, but they're going to be limited to SMGs. And Fur hasn't even made a decision yet on which route he wants to go on $2,600. This is a real chance now for Dignitas has to take quite a formidable lead. This round is difficult for SK to get three AK sure, but Fur, he's on the tech line, and Fox, he's just got the UMP. They have got the smoke tip. The most successful round to be from the executions, to be fair, but. Valda, he's not been scared to go aggressive here, just with the M4 as well. Config has got the AWP this time, it's not going to be occasion being what we're used to. And I think Config is actually almost alone towards that B site. Facing the wall, it's Cajun waiting for flashes to come around the corner. Yeah, just trying to bait each other in. One player hides, one takes the aggro, hides behind the rock, and then his teammate can run around the corner and see what he can do here. Let's see whether they decide to go any further. Just the patience will be key here. Don't want to give anything away. It's Rubino the baiting case. Right? So, as soon as he fires a shot. Ooh, okay then. Okay, he goes aggressive, gets the kill. They can fall back now. Job done. That's perfect. Cold had a nice position to watch off toward Park, but Cajun getting that kill. He has to change his focus and attention. Drops down nearly. Gets caught out for a second kill, but Fox is able to pull this back from far with the UMP. And this will force the retreat of Dignitas back to the site, which if they had it done a little bit sooner, yep. they'd still have the man advantage. Definitely had the opportunity then as well. Valda, I have to say, gets a little bit greedy there. Wants to try and really assert his dominance there towards mid. He certainly could have fallen back. The problem is, yes, he goes for that kill. He's got no one to back him up at that stage, so he drops without a frag and now to 4-4, four and four, which traditionally favours SK, and even more so at this point. They had a UMP before. They actually pick up his M4, and now they've actually got a real chance with 30 seconds remaining to do something with this, and they have three smokes as well. Config's playing front side of the jackal. barrels. Yeah, that's very peculiar. Score as well. Fast scope, but if he's behind barrels, okay, you gotta wait for them to commit a little longer, but he's got something to crouch behind, so it's one and done. I've got to Sure, the mentality maybe catch them off, hope for the best, but bounce smoke. Yesterday we saw that smoke bounce too far back. It left Fox in the open. This time he won't be. He's gonna put the bomb down. Cold's gonna follow it up by taking Rubino and Fallen. We'll back through the short tunnel to front side monster and make sure he's in position to play off his teammates because he's low on HP on 19 and Cajun's getting ever closer. Doesn't quite spot the player going over to the barrels in time. That's going to be Cold Zero. And MSL's found immediately after. He gets both those, in fact, so good reactions. And SK up to six. Well, after winning that eco round, Dignitas do have money in the bank to work with, but still, you have to say, like, that you could see that Dignitas had that a radio was coming towards B. Convict's position at that point was, was very strange. Yes, he gets that first kill, but he's just got no chance to get his second. The nature of the AWP itself, you have, like, 1.5 seconds to actually kind of quick switch the AWP out and get it scoped up again to do anything with it, but once that shot comes in, there's nothing really can do to stay alive. You're right, if he goes behind the barrels, yes, he's got a risk of getting bottles out of that position, but at least it's safer than standing in the open like that. A very strange decision from him, but not work out and like I said that was a chance for Dignitas to really take the lead there would have broken SK's economy so do you have to available for Dignitas and Cajun B strikes first with AWP taking out far. Been a while since we've seen a self boost out toward the flower pots to be fair. Yeah it's not as popular as it used to be. I like it. Works that time perfectly before it goes down. The deadlock continues. Small is only on the pistol. Good swing out. MSL playing a very tight angle anticipating that perhaps and it works out perfectly. So both plays they've made and setups they've positioned themselves for towards the kill. Gives them a five versus three situation as Cajun back inside of the site looks to the forge to the front of the bathroom, but already they're going a lot more passive. Hold his position in this though. Gives a lot more information. Once again though, yes. He's he's pushing getting intel, but if he goes down, that opens up the window of opportunity. Timing might be on point. It's once again he does go down. And this huge opportunity is like the money's weak right now. They've had to really force into this one. They've got the man advantage. I would say just full back, played the safe game at that stage, but was trying to get more intel for his team. Config on 16 HP as well, was playing back barrels. One nade would have killed him. Molotov as well, so he's shuffled out. Rubino's going front smoke. Wants him to push through it, wants to catch them off when they do so. They've rotated MSL already, it's the right call. Monster to be the approach. 
Smoke again on Sandbags. MSL's not 100% sure of it because they haven't shown themselves. And it's an early rotation, so he's second-guessing and going back. Rubino's going to have to step up. Fur gets tagged. Good play from Config. That lets him back in, but he shoots one way and expects the split to come through. No one's there. Config, low HP points yet another, but a lovely spray down from Fall, and it's not enough. Cajun B gets there just in time. That was kind of sick from Fallen. That discipline with the AK is tapping away perfectly. Thanks to down, but I have to say it's much more expensive than it have to be. And you've got those five on threes, you might just want to play the safe bet. There it is from Fallen. That was superb. Luckily, Cajun That's actually. a nice shot from that range as well in that position. Yeah, well, good job from Cajun. We go into round number 13. As you can see how this is affected. You have two UMPs going forward. SK know the money's weak at this point, so they're going to be forcing themselves into this one. Two AKs, three Tech Nines with the utility as well. They've been favorite towards B so far, but they're going to try their lucky connector once again. This is where it all fell apart against those pistols. Cajun this time towards middle with the AWP. Doesn't spot anything at the start of the round. I would say a B split comes in from short. Smoke's coming first, but good reaction from the CTs there. One decides to fall back with the bomb as well towards the C spawn, so maybe not actually going with the intended plan, going to make their way back towards middle. Some rotations here. There are three CDs towards B at the moment. Fox is investigating towards mid. Trying his best. Clears out most of the angles. Still anticipating a little bit of pressure from Dignitas up toward the party position. They've gone there quite a few times on the CT side. It's something we didn't see SK do very much yesterday against them, but they've already cleared out the positions at least they, they want. Forward of the inside connector to bathrooms. Cold Zero's made his way, and that's a bit different. A bit of a smaller angle to cover off, so that's not somewhere you're going to cross their place potentially on peak and that's what Cold's hoping that they'll get aggressive and catch them off as a result. Yeah, the one minute mark now and it looks like an A play will be coming in to finish things off. SK still have three smokes remaining as well. They've got the mid control but Cajun B lying in way on this A side with the AWP trying to find the first pick. Been very good at this so far. Vauda is actually in a little aggressive position as well. Could get flashed in once to go in. Yeah, that's, another. that's exactly it. That's why he does it. He's been dropping in these key situations. Just when Dignitas don't need him to as well. He can't get back to play his teammate once again there. The problem is, too, there's no flash. He goes solo. Cold reads it well and positions it. But you're dead right. It's another time he goes down, and it's going to give a massive amount of pressure onto this A side. They don't capitalize immediately. It does allow for a rotation. Rubino included in that. He's going to try to deny default. Good shots from Farm. Cold reigns supreme. Not against MSL, though, who tries to find one. Shuffles over it behind the truck. There is a gap where no smoke exists, but Fallen already taking the op out of Cajun B's hands. Oh. MSL's got a decision to make, and he's not going to find it. The teams that seem to have the less weaponry are seeming to find the wins in those it's situations. A, it's certainly a strange one. Like we said, you are just joining us. Both these teams are playing with standard right now. It's uh, Valder for Diggins Hads and Fox, of course, for SK Gaming. So it hasn't been like, in terms of what we're used to seeing from these lineups, like Diggins has in some of the best form of their careers right now, in terms of the ascendance of this team, in terms of the counter shot they're playing recently has been amazing. But uh, it's certainly some mistakes being made here on both sides. Valder for me, like the last few rounds, he, he seems to be caught up positions by himself. It's not necessarily the wrong thing to do to push that, but he's got no backup plan. If he doesn't land that first shot, he has no idea what's around that corner. He's heading for Intel once again, but no one's with him, right? So it's a bit of an issue. And we do have another. I think it was a pause called. Not live. Yeah, not live calls. So this will be technical. No, I think they wanted a tactical timeout, but and it didn't, it didn't get register. It. So yeah, they okay. I th mm, okay. That's fair, but I don't think you can call it not live on a tactical miss. If you're too late typing it in, I think the omens. Well, no, you. I think they they thought they were in time. And it didn't oh, you're saying they didn't register? Yeah. I, I thought you were saying they called it just too late. No, to no, no. Register. So like they, they yeah. called it, but it didn't happen. So I think that's why they're saying not live. And obviously nothing's been exchanged in terms of damage, so it, it can be done. Mod is with us as a tournament, of yes, course, so you can sort it out. Shout mod out the him. mod. Mod the mod. Hand warmers for Kitchen B. Yeah. MSL as well. It's actually quite warm in here, so the booths might be air conditioned differently. I haven't stepped foot in these ones. A lot of players like to have their hands warm. Like, I used to do it before I played as well. Like, you used to run to the bathroom, run your hand into like hot water for like five minutes. Like, just kind of get the blood flowing, get it feel like you're in the zone. Playing with cold hands is. I not just stick my hands down my pants. That's fine. Yeah, they're usually warm. That's normally what you do. I have a lot of dead, I have a lot of dead time. time to warm them up, though, so it's fine. Right. Well, fair enough. Cajun can't really do that on stream. That wouldn't really work. It's true. I mean, it could, but it could, could kind of awkward. Probably not ideal. So, they're out of the don't, chairs. Don't get out the chairs. Uh, actually, so interesting. Fallen's going over to talk to Fox. So Fox is sitting on that end. So they we've got the console here. Trying to get something between them. See, there was anything going on. So oh, it's you that always switches the console button. No, it's not me. I've just adapted to other people. I don't change oh, okay. it because I don't want them to get upset. I normally use this. I one. always change it back I just to like, the tilde. I can handle it. Um, yeah, can you restart round admin? They're calling for it now. I'm sure the admin must be aware. He must be in the building. 
Nah, they've all gone home at this point. He's like, this game, this map will probably be fine. I'll leave you guys to it. Yeah. You win. Kitchen at the hotel closes at 12. It's not 24-hour room service. I got to go get my order in. Yeah. Peace out. You guys will be fine. Yeah, it's fine. So we'll just get the I was here. shocked by that, by the way. What? Well, it's my fault for missing my first flight, but I landed at like 1.30 by the time I get to the hotel after LAX. No traffic at night, thankfully. Call down. They're like late night room service menu. I'm like, great. Just like every hotel, so call down. Them, uh, Sorry, sir. Kitchen closed at 12. Oh, my God. Was I ever mad. Delivery, bro. That's what we need to get on. Do they have that here in California? They've got, they've got the equivalent. Yeah, they've got to have something. You're right. Definitely. Or Uber, I think, even does delivery Uber service eats, now. Yeah, yeah exactly. On. Other brands are available. Yep. I don't know who's sponsoring this tournament, so I don't want to start naming yeah, it's true. brands. So, you know, it's fine. 7-6. Um, and we have got the restart coming in. So it's fine. We are back in the game. Ebot has been reset, and it should be a full eco here at this point. Some quite difficult rounds for both teams to swallow. No one's really running away with this. It seems like the lesser weaponry seems to be coming up. Trumps almost every single time, it feels like. But this is going to have to be a hard eco for Dignitas. They stacked the connector before. That worked out for them. They don't really, can't really justify even P50s at this point. It's very unlikely to do the similar sort of damage they inflicted before. Rubino's pushed very aggressively as well. Just with the USPs, they get flashed off though, they can't go around the corner and take this toward the fountain. Way back. What's the situation? Nice shot from Convict to take out Fur, but Cold's immediately there after his spray down three. There was a situation where a push like that, oh, I like that, Fallen switching over, realizes, hi Volda, and gets time to almost greet him before he shoots him down. There was a situation, Fnatic versus TSM PGL kickoff season. Where a push like that actually did win to win a championship with five USPs around the corner toward the statue. Well, then, just config remaining. He's got an AK. He just wants to save it, but you know what? Nails some headshots at the same time as well. That's fine. Has no ground to win the round. He's so far removed from it, of course. He's on towards long A. Bombs down in B. Fox and Fallen remain. AK in hand for Convicts is going to be keeping that weapon up by two kills. And only $1,400 going into the bank account. They're not going to be in an ideal situation in the next round. Cajun B's seeing a $2,900 when that happens. You'll have three grand for Rubino. So this could go to 9.6 for SK. Well, it's $1,900. $1,900, $1, sorry, you're right. It's two in a row now. But yes, I pretty much one more added, so yeah. yeah. It certainly can't buy, but they'll be... Looking to do some damage here, they can get PG 50s and 5 seconds at least, and then his AK as well, so it can cause a little bit of damage, you know, but uh, we'll see. Config into great form. Oh, okay, so around the 4k mark, they're going to go for it. I guess at this point, you're two rounds, you save an AK, let's, let's see what we can do here. There's a little bit of a replay for you, the Cold Zero spray down, I would assume. Very nice control from him. You can see ext how ecstatic he was there with that. Cool, that's cute. Come back. Double orb set up on the T side. We saw this. Which map was it? It was on Mirage, I think, for SK. Didn't really work out too well for them, but they seem like they're in great form right now. Much better showing than what we saw in the first day on this map against Dignitas as well. They actually only got 67 total, so they've already bested that and they have the lead at the moment. So good work. This was the push mm -hmm. that worked out so well before on day one. They pushed over and it looks like you're not going to fall SK twice with that one. They fall back passively. Yeah, Taco was ready for it, stayed well tracked back behind the barrels and fence. But Flashman pushed him out of position, they're going to bring Fox over as a result of this. So double op T side, SK, Fox, the second one to wield, is going to try and get in position, spray through. Bait them out, good response, good reaction from Fox, Fox to the Tech-9 though. As they get ever closer, finds two. He is starting to warm up onto this, I wouldn't say roster in terms of role yet, but in terms of frag potential, he's definitely coming to life in this tournament over time. Fur will get inside bathroom, start to push over toward connection point to long. His teammate already pushed up. Bomb behind in the hands of Fallen. They'll boost themselves up onto the flower pot. Good shot from Fallen to take KGB down. So both AWPs, T side, have found kills. In fact, all of the kills for those two players. One, of course, with the Tech 9. Fallen does what he can to push himself back through in the front of the bathrooms. I think they'll have heard that flash. Fur is waiting for it. He is looking toward the main door, though, but Fall does. Very exposed inside the bathrooms, Henry. Indeed, very exposed. Not in a good way. Rubino now. Last player remaining. You feel like this is almost a certainty with the bomb going towards A as well. Rubino can't do much about it. Even if he gets his kill, it's like, not like he can really have that much impact. I don't even think you'll find that. He does. Okay. That gives his position away. The bomb going down towards A as well. It's pretty much guaranteed the round. It will be 9 Save, save the art, man. Save the art. Save the art. 9 6. There it is. SK Gaming. They seem to be stepping up to play after losing the pistol as well. 
getting nine rounds on what we said was a CT-sided map. That's actually a really good showing there. The, the, the gun rounds are much better, and they seem to be maybe getting things together on overpass as a whole. I would say that the, the CT side was more a problem for me in the first game because we never really got to see their T side get rolling because of how far behind they were. So this, it's still going to be a challenge, especially if they do lose this pistol and it goes to 9-9. Because remember, Dignitas, we mentioned it, bullied them on the B site. That's they read true. them so well. But that SK are going to be aware of that, right? They're going to be adjusting things and working what the problems were. They're not going to allow the same mistakes to be made. Five sets of armor for the CTs here. If they can pick up this pistol, put themselves one step closer to going to the semi finals. We're going to have to say goodbye to Dignitas. They've got P250s, actually two of them. That's quite rare to see on the T pistol. Okay, and it's K to open things up. So it's going to be dropped as well as a team kill. Team a little kill, bit yep. crazy, but still got a man advantage for now. This is so good from SK. Bending each other in. They're going to be finding multiple frags, and now it's a three or two in their favor. Close call from Fox to slide and slip it behind Fallen as well, limit his movement, but they pick up the kills required. The team kill definitely helps them. His config was firing away, and his team well, tripped over each other. He's got bomb picked back up, though, and he's trying to open up the door quickly enough to speak if anyone's waiting for him. Now knows they aren't. So the B side, he'll try and make his presence known. No one there just yet, rotating back over, realizing this is a possibility. And inside the window, Taco's going to spray through the smoke. Style points, config. 58 seconds, one versus three. He's had some crazy rounds throughout the series. Indeed. Well, if he can get a plan here, that would be great. That would be a really nice recovery. He's not going to win the round necessarily, but just to get the money going forward, that would be something to work with. He's just going to hide up now. I actually like this. He's got so much time to work with. He's got himself in a quite a sneaky position. If a CD makes a mistake, they're trying to hunt for a bit of intel. He gets that kill, gets the bomb down as well. That's actually becoming winnable at this point. I don't think it'll work out for him. There's no real reason to go hunting at this point. He's got two players towards B. He just went away from the touch of bomb. He can actually get the plan down pretty easily. They're actually allowing him to do that, but it looks things. He could actually be his own nemesis if he goes hunting any further. Ooh. Different spot to plant in. Taco can just see him, but won't. So they'll get money out of this. Could be in an earlier buy if he can't convert it. They haven't picked him just yet. Now they'll go together. Wrap around. What? Lovely shot. Takes Fallen out of the window. They've got to go the two players together. He's trying to isolate them behind the pillar. Not a bad position to be in if he can hit a headshot, but he won't find it. Fox is Good there. Lord. If he hits that second shot just as fast as he found the first, Wow. A whole different ball game. It was a pretty nutty round to kick things off towards the connector. It was five players from the team towards that little underground position. And they get the first headshot as well, but a good recovery from SK. They actually put the most of the manpower towards that connector position. And Cajun, sorry, Config left and now one versus three. That's a great job to actually get the bomb down there. And what a lovely shot it was towards the heaven position as Fallen and Fox working together. Boom, Fallen is taken down. And bomb planted. Boom. Yeah, it's still a good round overall, I think, for Config. That's pretty much as good as it was going to get, considering the situation. So no bomb plant. Oh, sorry, no punches coming in after the bomb plant in the second round. They'll go for AKs in the third. The safer move, obviously. We normally talk about SK Gaming getting those five SMGs set up here. Not going to be the case this time. They're going to have two M4s and an MP9. Interesting. Considering they know the, the AKs are going to be in the third, I think that's a, a little bit of a misplay. At least have three UMPs. Are they actually viable in the gun rounds? The MP9's not so much. Fast pace toward this A site. All the things about jumping himself open the flower pot. I'm not sure what for. Either way, they're around that already. Good read from Fallen to put out the Molotov early smoke in front of bathrooms and a flash as well. He wants to get to the corner. He's going to leave the site in doing so, but they've already got a rotation back into the stairwell. And Fox is an M4 from that position. Furs in behind the truck. Just deny the plants. Two plants, full save. And it'll be a full on by the next round. The MP9 from the far though has to tap the weight. Doesn't manage to pick up one. Fox comes back in, but he's dropped down. It's back and forth the fair, and the kill is getting sloppy. Nearly damage coming in to Taco as well, but he'll close it out, thankfully, before the bomb does get re picked up and planted down. So 11 6, no secondary plant, still gonna have AKs. Absolutely right, but still not as convincing as it perhaps should have been there. SK up against the Glocks and a couple of PC 50s managed to lose three kills. So, the weaponry comes in. Three M4s now, a UMP and a Famous. And obviously, Dignitas has five AKs. They get an AC work as well. Five smokes, a couple of Molotovs jumped in there. This is the round you expect them to pick up, all things considered. But if SK managed to do it, it puts them in a fantastic position going forward. Smokes go in. We'll see whether Valda using this little pallet position. It wasn't so common this first map, this map first came out. A lot of teams are actually using this now. It seems to be actually quite viable to find headshots there and any sort of aggressing CTs. But mid control coming in. Flashes towards long A as well. And the teammates will try and use their AKs towards that position. It's very unlikely the orb will be coming in. Almost impossible for the CTs at this point. And then we'll get some solid orb control as well. If they wrap back to the front of the bathrooms and that boost is still there, Fur can just barely see enough, but they're going to have to drop and run fast. 
One more player in the A site. Fox can cover them off from far so they can't get pinched in from long. Fox will now have that information. They're going to commit to this boost. How long do they commit, though, with no one else heading that direction? Smoke off from Fur. MSL starting to creep. He's the one with the bomb. Volda not quite spotted inside the park. It's going to be MSL walking directly into this crossing. Does he check it? Not quite. Bomb goes down. Back away instantly. Nice boost there. Obviously, he's up against it. Oh, okay. It gets a little bit problematic. Only takes a sliver of damage. It looked a little bit worse than I thought, but... It's going to be four players remaining now for Dig. Like we said, if SK can't pick up this round, it's tremendously beneficial for them in terms of the money game. This could be a fake. There's not really enough time to do it. If you have the smokes come in, I think this will be the commitment. And SK trying to work out what's the recovery position. Another boost coming in. This could work out, but the smoke's blocking their vision. And the flash as well was well-timed. Fur's going to try and relocate himself on the other side of the site. Flanks coming in. Two players hot on the heels of Dignitas. Fur tries to spray and anticipate him in the corner. Bomb gets planted either way. And Volta, he might capitalize. He's on the truck. He can catch them all. Two kills for him. A third as well as he gets in behind. Never mind the flank because he's done all the work. It's on to cold. He might find one, but that's all he's going to get. Very well done from Volta in that situation. After losing that first frag with the boost towards the buff, Mary, I thought SK set himself up in a perfect position there, but what a lovely execution from Dignitas, that wall of smoke. The wall has never been truer. And as you can see, Valdez is pushing through. The city's had no idea. Three great kills on him. Very nice work indeed. It will be 11-7 now, and that, has to, that is going to be breaking the money basket. They've had a few rough rounds here. After winning the pistol, quite tight ones after that, so... Full EK required, and Dignitas now a chance to get back into this one. 11-7, they will have five AKs, of course. Nothing really much on the CTs. They get a couple of CZs and five sevens. Fox attack over some body armor, to be fair. Smoked out, Mr. Bino. Chucking that smoke, it's actually quite a nice one. That's really cool to actually throw in that early in the round. All the way from T-Stairs. Yeah, that's great. Volta down below with the AK-47, waiting for anyone to potentially push. Rubino doing the same. So a very passive approach from Dignitas on this round. Good read of the economy. Economy was a problem for SK last time we saw them on this CT side. Well, I'm going to be grabbed and head back over toward the direction of the B site. AK still down, waiting for the rotations, but Taco's the only one that's pushing on this. Good view of it, actually, to see it. As the train heads over, the overpass spotted out, though, is Taco by Rubino. That's the entry, that's the invitation, because they know him pushed up means likely the site less open. He's going to be less defended. He'll now go in. Urbino checks corner as well. Cajun with the confidence in his check. It's going to go ahead and plant back bag. So that seems to be a common position where Dignitas likes to plant the bomb as Urbino gets cold zero. Just Fur and Fallen remaining. And they'll set on either side of the site to try and find exits. But Fallen actually right now as we watch. Fur has Volda at one. One HP around the corner trying to play a headshot angle. They may find him. It's going to happen just now. If Volda goes down with this one HP, it's a gun for Fallen. On the repeak, and there it is. AK grab Molotov there as well. Might as well get the utility you can. And Fallen's going to back with that, but Config is in a position to try and catch him off as well. Toward the mountain. Doesn't land it, though. That's now alive. Is Fallen. That Molotov may come in handy. Which way is he going to throw it? They're hunting so quickly. And to his right, already arriving. MSL's there. No AK carried over. Pretty simple round there for Dignitas. Only giving away one frag. And then to touch. Kind of shorten the gap now, it's 11-8. And I don't think a buy is available for SK here, so it should be 11-9 after this one. I think they'll probably go for some PD-50s, stack up together, maybe just go for a B-stack, push off short, potentially with a flashbang, something like that. It's very unlikely you can win the, really win the round, but uh, let's see if they can cause some damage to the AK. So Dignitas has to be more than aware. And I think this will be some sort of tactical pause coming in. It has been called as for SK gaming this time. So it's going to be working out what their approach is. Just going to see whether, okay, we've got some, a chance to get some pistols out here. Don't really have to fully commit in terms of armor or anything like that. Do we go for a beast act? Do we try to push middle? Get a flashbang perhaps? Taco gets body armor once more. They're just kind of discussing the plan going forward. They still have this big lead. Don't want to force into situations that are unfavorable. Just want to make sure they give themselves a good chance to close this one out. 11-8. This is the third and final map of today. They've had four best of threes. Running into... Go on. I was going to say, winner of this one will play Astralis, as we mentioned Ooh. at the very start of this Astralis series. Astralis looked sick at the beginning of this tournament. They just completely decimated it. Wouldn't be the first time Astralis had a good group stage that wasn't converted. Yeah, true. But the guys on the desk were speculating where it was Carrigan that was cursed, not Astralis. I mean, to be fair, you could argue Fetish was cursed too. Cajun B. Quick smoke off toward the park. Or rather, excuse me, onto the party. And they're going to get a little bit closer onto where the fountain is. It's making a lot of noise, though. And up close, 
Turner has an all right position to try and work off this. They need to be careful. The flash is coming over in the open. MSL gets his aim back just in time. Burr couldn't convert. That would have been a massive kill for them to find. And Zero, interestingly enough, will follow up on that damage dealt. They won't be able to get forward and get an AK-47. Ugly dink from far as well on Cajun B. This is getting a little bit problematic now. Needs his car to calm down. They have got Valder though. Going to the CA site. Managed to secure the round at this point. That's a nice play from him. Marco though is also going to be found. If he had picked up the kill, get it with his damage. If he picked it up for free there. Could have been a situation where they could have grabbed guns, but Fox going down in the end. It's now just two rounds. The difference. AWP comes out immediately onto Fallen and rifles to compliment. So on this map, I cannot blame them. Fallen is probably the best AWP player in the A site. Sorry, Guardian, but I think it's his map to take. Wow. He does do some tremendous work there, to be fair. Like, he's got so many highlight clips on this map, especially. And in that A bomb site. We'll see what happens as we go into another gun round here. It's going to be the AWP. Fallen, same story of occasion as well. What's the play here? As we go into round number 21, there is going to be a little bit of aggression towards middle. That's Fallen. Fires up a pop shot there, doesn't find anything for us. He gets flashed. Cold Zero, aggressive towards Shaw, pushing through flames there. Gets himself in a nice little position towards the connector. Okay, going to be coming, investigating. If he goes first, okay, good idea. I was going to say, good idea for myself to go in with the AK first. Escorting Cajun, if you will. Get rid of the bomb before he does so. Tacos here, though, flashing. Well timed, very well done. In fact, Cajun's going to get the kill, but MSL is UTA escorting him. Finds Cold, who's in the corner. And that's going to get them a lot warmer as they get inside of the site. Bomb thrown on top of the platform as Rubino, first one in, doesn't want to stop to plant. He wants to make sure he secures off the rotations. So MSL's the one to plant it, but already, I think the map in the middle says it all. They're going to be trying to save and conflict, but that's very likely. Tries to hunt them down early, catch them off, but well, does the next in line as he's found taken down. And they need all three of these guns to be kept up, or this goes 11-10. Dignitas again last time was able to batter and bruise SK in every opportunity given to them on the T side. Absolutely. Wow. Three on three now. Oh, does find a shot with the AWP, but like you said, he's going to be saving the weapons at this point. Fantastic work. That, that timing on the flashbangs from the short tunnel as well. Really nice stuff from them. There's aggressive play from SK trying to catch the T's off guard there, but they were just ready for that. Shut them down. Lovely headshots. I should think bring things into 10 as well. Two players survive for SK, it's going to be fair with the M4 and Fallen with the AWP. So, in terms of the money, you can certainly buy up around this one, but Dignitas now homing in on tying things up at 11 11. I don't think we've actually seen that this one, which is rare for us. It is rare for us. Very yep. rare. I'm glad you subscribed to that philosophy. Yeah, well, it seems like Canadians really make a deal out of it more than anyone I've met. I mean, we make a big deal because we are a big deal, Henry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> There we go then. I know that's hard for you to comprehend coming from such a small little island. But a very powerful one. Very proud. Yeah, sure. How's Brexit? You're going to be all it's isolated going, on your going own? right, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Cool, just check. Never been better. Currency? Dying. Yeah. Monarch? Hopefully dying. <laughs> <laughs> just, just getting up there. Longest serving monarch now, I think, as of this year. It's not a bad title. It's also because no one's really at war trying to kill kings and queens anymore. So <laughs> That's <a> quite <laughs> that, that helps. Anyway, let's get back to this one, shall we? Another war in its own. It's going to be 11-10. SK now. Orp. And they're really up against it in terms of money. Yes, they saved two weapons in the previous round. We can see them filling the burn a little bit more. Famous. Uh, UMP. A little bit more aggressive towards long. The Orp's actually going to be there as well. About it. Gets control connected with his teammates as well. So map control gain on the B side of the map. It's going to be Rubino waiting towards Monster as well. I would assume it'll be a beast out of play. Full execution. They know the CDs don't necessarily have the weapon to hold them off. It was where Fox was struggling as well before. This time, no Fox on the B side. It's actually Cold Zero and Taco. So maybe they have adjusted things since yesterday. It's entirely possible. They've done it. It was, a, it was an that. absolute nightmare, to be fair. When we first watched to it, be, B side it, was it, a nightmare. To be fair as well, Fox is the swing player normally in these situations. But Fallen right now, that they're going to send over on the AWP. So Fur pushed up. Cold close, goes for the peak, catches them off as well. MSL's the first to go down. Taco, no vision, can't decide if he wants to peak Monster or go to support his teammate. He goes for Monster instead. And both of them end up down, but they give them such an advantage that Fallen rotates and finds two on the up. And already more success on the gun rounds on the yeah. CT side. Much better. That's how it should be going down. Good flashbangs, good response as well. The grenades are on point, and even with just a UMP, it's Cold Zera finding kills. He's very good in that position. And you can see that looks much better, doesn't it? That's what it should be looking like. And you can see that was a difficult round for SK, but they managed to hold on. Those saved weapons paying dividends there, and they increased their lead to 12-10.
Money's still available just about for Dignitas. Another full buy coming in. They've got four AKs and an orb in the hand occasion. But Fallen, like you said, possibly one of the best players on this map as a whole. He's got the orb himself. And I'll have a look as to where he's positioning himself. I think he's towards long once again on that flower bed, as we pointed out before. Not so common these days. You're very vulnerable to flashbangs there. Fallen. He's he's one of the players, to be fair, that loves to use that. Guardian as well. He's like made that position iconic almost. I think his kills he used to get from that position. Interestingly enough, it was Guardian's boost that got Fallen off on that flower pot as well. 22 kills for Fallen, he leads the way. Four rounds went to Dignitas before SK picked up that last one, so reset still an absolute possibility. They were efficient in the last one, no less, to keep guns up, but still have to keep that in mind. Considering the struggles they've had to get to 13 right now would be massive. And in doing so, they in turn would break Dignitas down. All that leads the way for them, by the way, in 18, but I still have to point out. He's had some very good rounds. He's had some careless ones where he's isolated himself and given up advantages that shouldn't have happened. Well, then, towards long, and he's got potentially as well. You can see for very difficult position to find frags. If he gets one, and... Okay, he gets one. It's fallen and helps him out. But great work there. Actually, find those two frags from SK Gaming. Four on three now. They will continue their ascendance to the A site. Fallen finds another frag. This is where he shines. Great in this proximity in front of Parkside to that back APC. Somehow he always finds an angle to find shots. Gets two already in this round, as you mentioned. And for, goes for the one and done. There it is again. Fallen slips out. Knows exactly where to place the crosshair. Takes down Rubino. SK might just find back-to-back -back rounds. Something that was extremely hard for them to do just a day ago with Fox in this lineup. Adjustments have been made. Cajun does have the bomb. Could try and get something done over toward the B site, but he's making a lot of noise in doing it. And as soon as he goes to this plant, Taco's going to pop up. Hello, Cajun. Down you go. Four Very seconds smart. left as well. He had to go for the plant. Really nice stuff from SK now. I think that's broken the economy. It's such a crucial part of the game as well. They can't really justify forcing in for this one. So. Presumably going to be 14 10 here. Presque Gaming. Just chilling. Hello, lads. How's it going? Well, then. They didn't answer. Didn't they didn't, didn't answer, but it was more just uh, a friendly gesture, you know? Fair game. And it's going to be round number 24, like I said. Can't really justify the force at this point. That could be an absolute nightmare going forward. The biggest they force into it, lose it. Allow SK to almost get onto match point at that point. So, what have we got here? A B execution, it seems, for the dangerous side. They've got three smokes. Flashbangs will be smoking towards a bomb site. Heaven, maybe towards the CT entrance as well. Just to try, you, you want to smoke the bomb side to be clear. You can run the bomb in there and just plant it exactly in the smoke. That's what you want to be going for in these sort of rounds. And you can push through with the PD50s and Tech 9s, which hopefully gets some trade frags. It's very unlikely he can win the round. But if you get an M4 or even an AWP, for example, that could be interesting. Cold jumping for information. We'll give that up as soon as he's spotted. Need to get his head blown off. It's not something I try and recommend on anyone or wish upon anyone, except for you sometimes. <laughs> How did I not see that yeah. beautifully delivered joke coming? Uh, thank you. I'm uh, quite crafty. Yeah. Taco, no smoke in front on Monster, and a smoke on Bags can focus a little more firmly, but instead he's going to go back toward barrels instead. Speaking of well delivered. Back to instead, back toward barrels instead. But he does want to watch to make sure they don't boost up on the railing to see inside of the site, which is entirely a possibility when you have pistols, because you want to get as much damage done before you arrive and then try and overwhelm when the chaos ensues as a result of an early pick. Right now, though, it can't happen. The shuffle positions. Taco swings out, doesn't land the shots, interestingly enough. He thought he killed his intended target because he switched to the next player, but didn't quite take the first one down. Either way, it doesn't matter. Volta's going to be the last to fall in 14 rounds for SK. It's two to go, and they are through. Indeed, they will be. Well then, 14-10, and the money getting in a decent position now. It's not over just yet. Dignitas has to have another full bite to go before SK Gaming reach series point. And who would have thought it? From what we saw on this matchup in the first day, SK versus Dignitas has an overpass, 67. Very convincing. Seems like they've addressed the issues in the b bombs. So that's looking great. And looking at the scoreboard just quickly now, we're going to have fallen 25 frags, delivering a world-class performance. It's not so far. Cold Zero not far behind at 23. Valda leading the charge on the Dignitas side. It looks like a B-Rush here, Matt. Let's see if this one goes down for them. He goes straight with the Monk's Tunnel. Taco opens things up. Go burning, but stays for the fight, and it works out well. He gets three kills on the way through. It's going to bring Cold into it, but Config, as always, against odds, pulls things back somehow to let Dignitas get a palm plant out of this. Valda's going to do it inside of the smoke. Nate goes through, and Config 
Nearly goes down as a result of it. He's at 5 HP. That uh, one will take it. Fox closes it. Vault is in position. Watch the smoke because Fox, he may not find him directly inside of that right away. So has to sit back, not go for the peak. Allow his teammate to walk in from behind. It's going to be fallen on an AWP, and that's more than enough to put Matt Point in hand. Well, there it is. The Hail Mary play from Dignitas there. They had the full buy. They go for the B rush. And once they haven't done that just yet. I actually kind of like that approach from him, but Taco, what a play from him. The three man spray down comes in from the barrel position as well. I don't think the Molotov was thrown perfectly there. You can see yeah, the replay. He actually has position to move into. He actually, okay, it did spread to him in the end, but he still commits three man spray down. Very, very good work from him and calm play That's here. The two versus one from Fallen. Just walks in, gets the job done, and manages to win the two versus one. And pause with Dignitas. Of course, you've got to take it at this point, Matt. I think they're a maximum loss bonus. Okay, fourth stage, not even maximum. So $2,900. Last round potentially here, then buy should be okay. He got three players on around the 3.8k mark. Vald is already bought, he's got a full buy. Same story for Convict. So they will get 8ks into this round, but it's in terms of the grenades, it won't necessarily be, necessarily be fully equipped. Very well done from Taco, I have to say, to stay and take that fight, knowing the situation that he has to shut down that rush on Monster. Otherwise, Plant comes in and they have position set. So here we go, SK, overcoming their demons of yesterday. Map and series point to go through to the playoffs against Dick and Toss on five AK-47s. And again, they're gonna get aggressive off the CT side. Not all the way through, although take that back. Fur's already inside the party. Smoke off, he's gonna peek this. And in peeking it, he's gonna go remember, Cold Zero played this position up against the wall. And yesterday they peeked it right. Rubino hit the shot. Fur's not gonna sit back and be complacent. MSL sitting and waiting. It's gonna be Fox instead. Trades one for one. MSL wins the duel against Fur. This will open up some room for Dignitas to play with. Fallen still here though. He's aggressive towards long, trying to see if he can find any kill here in return. It's the man advantage for now for Dignitas. Can't give anything away now. One round will send them packing. He's in such a tight position right now, Fallen. Anywhere he goes, he's this. got potential to get taken out. But they fall back down on the stairwell, and Fallen, at the same time, is gonna start to get a little bit more aggressive. Could be the right time to do so, as they're going to shuffle back over toward B. It's just Cold and Taco in that position. Cold as well pushed up toward construction. Watching that squeaky doorway. Means he's got to be reading this well, because they can spot him up through short pipe right now. So Taco instead tries to peek at Monster. No one's there. Is this going to be a misread, though? Is that going to leave Cold too comfortably waiting in that same position tunnel visioned onto the doorway? Taco spots them now. That'll change it. That'll pull Cold back. Good flash. They're low on HP, but the good flash does leave Taco out. You're right, he can't line them up this time. Does wait, does get back in. Crossfire set, he's got the first already. Cold found it, they're lined him up. They're gonna close it out. Well done from SK to rotate back. And they'll move through. Dignitas falls short. Lovely work there from SK. We didn't think they sort of chance on over pass, and they proved us wrong. After a really back and forth series there, they managed to close it out with what, five rounds in a row there. The B site, we said that was a massive problem in the first day. They've addressed the issues, they've done their homework, and they've actually come back stronger than ever. 16-10, Dignitas going to be a little bit gutted to that one.